Welcome and let's get rolling! The goal is to get a natural processing for your own projects or when submitting content to Stocksy. As the title of this first tutorial mentions, this Resolve overview will be brief, concentrating mainly on the color page. Go ahead and download the latest free version of DaVinci Resolve from the link in the description. As the interface can change between major versions, the recorded one might look slightly different, but the functionality is the same. Once your clips are trimmed and added to the timeline, or have been trimmed in the timeline directly, head over to the color page and let's get familiar with a few tools we'll be using often. A quick note that if you're using Resolve on a 1080 resolution monitor, the bottom panel will be combined with the left to fit the interface into a smaller size. Here's a quick explanation of the color page interface. The top toolbar reveals or hides certain panels and tools like the gallery on the left, which is used to keep your stills or import photo references. Stills are stored node structure snapshots that can be copied to other clips in your projects. The timeline will show or hide a mini snapshot of your timeline with the playhead at the current position. The Clips button reveals the thumbnails of the clips on the current timeline. Clicking on the Notes button will reveal or hide the Notes panel. The Lightbox button will give us a representation of the entire timeline in a grid thumbnail view, a very helpful way to check for inconsistencies throughout a shoot. In the middle we have the viewer with basic playback controls you might already be familiar with from other editing apps and will play back the currently selected clip. The node editor is where the bulk of our color adjustments will live in modular structures called nodes. The editor shows a visual flow of your video signal from left to right in your node tree from the input to the output. The clip strip shows the timeline clips, which you can navigate using the up and down buttons. At the bottom in the left palette, we have the color and log wheel panels, which will be our main grading tools. In the middle we have a set of tools used for secondary color grading like hue versus hue, hue versus saturation and so on. On the right we have one of the most important and useful tools which is a collection of indicators commonly referred to as scopes. We will be using the scopes and explaining their various uses as we go along in every tutorial so it is very important to get familiar with them. You can also undock the scopes to a separate window showing a combination of indicators at a time. If by any chance you find that certain panels are missing or they got rearranged, you can reset the user interface by clicking on the Reset UI layout in the Workspace menu. There are numerous other features to explore, but these are the main ones we'll be working with in the first session. Let's review what you've learned so far and familiarize yourself with the location and function. The top toolbar toggles the visibility of the gallery, timeline, clips, nodes and lightbox. In the middle section we have the gallery to import references, photos, the viewer and the node editor. And lastly, at the bottom we have the left panel with the grading tools, the center with the secondary grading tools and on the right we have the scopes. Next we'll dive in and learn how to get the proper exposure and contrast. Thank you.